plus we got some great education information for today on real estate, uh, just like every other time we bring to you. Um, I really look forward to this uh, interview because I have Lawrence Elliott and I have Julie Creeler from Philly Managed. And we're going to talk about a, a couple things in real estate, Philadelphia a little as a whole. We're going to talk about some good questions and answers that really will help buyers and sellers hopefully uh, fulfill a lot more sales, a lot more opportunities for transactions. How are you doing, guys? How are you doing? Great. Good, great. So talk. Uh, tell me a little about yourself. Let's start off with ladies first, of course. Of course. Of course. So uh, tell me a little about yourself, your background, what, what you've been doing in real estate. My name is Judy Kriegler. I've yep. been in the business as a licensed Pennsylvania agent since 2003, and I specialize in listing homes, selling homes, rentals, all residential. What areas do you cover? Like what I am in Bucks County, PA, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Montgomery County, Delaware, okay. whole tri-state area. Great. Tri-county area. Yeah, Lawrence Elliott uh, from Philly Managed. Uh, been in the business uh, in June. It'll be 25 years. I can't believe how much time has passed by. Uh, in that time frame, I've gone from uh, learning how to become a realtor to being president of the Board of Realtors, teaching at Penn State, um, mentoring, lecturing, uh, from a national standpoint, um, but I'm excited to be here with you today, Joe. Well, it's making me nervous. I think between the three of us, we have like over a half a century of, uh, of real estate education. Years. It's, it's a lot incredible. of years, a lot of rings around a tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to slow it down and we're going to talk about uh, some buyer situations. I, yeah. I think that I think um, I think buyer agents are in the market today are just trying to get deals under contract. They're not thinking about a lot of the repercussions that can happen. Uh, there's ethics issues, there's just sure. uh, due diligence issues that I think that are not being addressed with a lot of these newer realtors. And I know we run into that in, cir in certain circumstances and sometimes have to guide or mentor these realtors through because they're, they're, not, they're just not being guided correctly. They're just kind of shooting out of a cannon. Yeah, well, so, you know, to that fact, you can, it's very simple if you set people up in the first place with the right information, talk a little mm -hmm. about your buyers. Well, let's talk about um, boundaries of properties. Have you ever run into any survey issues or any type of uh, zoning issues, like, like, like in boundaries of a home? Say the sure. fence has gone over the, uh, the property. Sure. What have you had? Give me Buyers uh, or sellers. Yes. Even some of the sellers don't even know. They may have a fence on their property, and they assume that that's their property, but they haven't had a survey done. So we do recommend, if you really need to know whose side of the fence you, know, you belong on, get a survey done. We can't determine that just by looking at photos. I mean, out in Bucks County, I think that you, you'll have more majestic properties where there's issues where you really don't know where the boundary is well, sometimes. To speak it's to that fact, you know, you have buyers who say, well, where does the property line end? So you'll see a lot of realtors, and, and this mar I marvel at this, where they walk over and they see a rock over here. Well, this is, must be where... The, the property ends, or a tree that stump tree over, over there. there. Right. Or that little stick. We always were based exactly. it on the little stick in the corner. Right. So I don't know. And, and I don't know what's under the ground. Mm -hmm. So a survey, which we will always recommend, will bring up to light all those issues. What's under the ground, easements, where they can put their pool, that kind of thing. Can I put my pool here? Mm, I don't know. You might want to hire somebody that can tell you that, like a pool person or a survey. And yeah, you might strike point. oil. Yeah, and you it might, might not get be lucky. really and, and you sure. Well, yeah, exactly. well, you might strike your own oil tank. That's, <laughs> That's really right. what you might strike. That's right. So, so uh, I, I could see circumstances like that come up, especially when you have these large tract of lands. You have a house plopped in the middle, and really nobody knows the history of the property. Uh, you don't see that as much. Well, you see that more on from a boundary perspective in Philadelphia because people just start building fences in their backyard sure, yeah. and taking in property that's not theirs right. or vice versa. I mean, we've had the same situation in our property. We live in Philadelphia, um, and they actually, the, the client next door, built the fence and actually gave me more space and said, are you aware that you're not running off the line of your property? You're running off of three feet on your side. He goes, well, it's okay. We'll just write a little note. No, I actually had us write up a little contract. Right. Is it where exactly. we ever sell the properties? We know that that fence is not situated. But right here's right. something interesting. After 21 years, you might own that property if you're maintaining that side. It's, it's called adverse possession. Well, that's where things get a little muddy in, yeah. you know, in some of the neighborhoods. And yeah. uh, because, of, again, properties are on top of each other. Sure. Where in Bucks County, they're much more spread. But again, it's the same mentality. Oh, I, I used to use the boundary, that stick over there. Well, what happened to the stick? Right. Um, let's talk about Get another survey, well and that ties into some other due diligence um, home inspection 
like, what's your take on home inspection? What's your take on home inspection? Yeah, so from which point are we talking about? From a listing standpoint, or are we talking about from a buyer standpoint? Okay, so I'm the buyer, mm -hmm. and I see a home inspection report sitting on the, 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 the countertop. Yeah. Okay. Great. Am I gonna? Yeah, but am I gonna take the word of that home no, inspector? Never. No. As Absolutely a buyer, not. no. You're still going to go out, get your own home inspector, and set up that appointment, get your home inspection done right away. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and, and I would imagine you would say the same thing. Absolutely, because it's in your best interest to mm -hmm. have your own report. You're paying for it. It's the due diligence that they find anything wrong with it. It's based on to help you. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, I'm not saying anything about a, an inspection report that a seller would have would have anything other than the truth in it, but it's best to have your own report because if anything were to come of light and you use the sellers and if something happens later on, courts are probably going to say, well, you should have had your own, you know. Okay, and that leads into some other things that really have come up, actually on a van tour that I was just recently on with some investors, mm -hmm. lead inspection, yeah. radon. Yeah. All the, the environmental yeah. quine. Which one do you want to handle first? Right? I mean, I mean, are they all the same with an inspector, or do, do I call one place and do they all address all of their needs, and, or do I have to go out and get separate evaluations for radon, for termite, for lead? I, I mean, can like, answer that. Some of the companies, of course, they do their home inspection for you, and then they'll come out and they'll put the canisters out for the radon. Separate termite is always recommended, and even a pool inspection. You need a separate pool inspector. So, I mean, not the same it, company. In your experiences, I mean, listen, we're, we're talking over 20 years' experience, you know, combined here, 25 years of experience, really. Do you see the package as the better way to go for individual experts that are? I mean, we're talking about a home that you, it's an investment. You're buying a home, it's not called, buying a dog. Yeah, it's called you know? convenience, one stop shopping. And that's done all over the place. Now, listen, some inspection companies have a, uh, a full repertoire of things that they do from the radon from the pool inspections, from the termite inspections, and the general home inspection, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, the general home inspection, the radon, the termite, that's all good to get with one, but a pool inspection, I would hire a pool company. I don't think too many inspection companies are expert in just pools. So you gotta really ask the question, and it really depends on, speaking of pools, if what time of year the we're factor. talking about. Yeah, because in wintertime, we really can't check out if the motor's working. We're gonna, and we're going to get more into the details because there's some other questions I have in regards to some other items when we're looking at houses that are in need of repair or distress. So after this commercial break, we're going to come back and we're going to get more into some details of really evaluating a home from the buying or listing side. We'll get back to you in just a few minutes. For independent living for seniors age 62 and over, People Inc. offers safe, maintenance-free apartments across western New York. The affordable rent is income-based. For more information, call People Inc. Senior Living at 817-9090. Looking for a cooking oil with a light flavor and reduced absorption so food preserves its natural flavor? One with a high smoke point for stir-frying, sautéing, grilling, and baking? Then choose all-natural Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil, imported from France. Grapes have been a key ingredient of the healthy Mediterranean diet for years. Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil is the chef's choice for high heat cooking, grilling, stir frying, sauteing, or even deep frying. And Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil is great for baking too, because its delicate taste does not overwhelm the flavor of cakes, cookies, and other favorite recipes. A key traditional ingredient of the Mediterranean, grapeseed oil is a rich source of vitamin E antioxidant and naturally gluten free. Buy imported Pompeian 100% grapeseed oil today and find great recipes at Pompeian.com. Wait, don't let this happen to you. At Jan Fence, we're family owned and operated for over 50 years, providing a wide choice of fencing. Why wait online at the big box store? Just call Jan Fence. Ask about our easy fence to go products by Active Yards, the first truly do it yourself fence product. At Jan Fence, we always do what we say. Come see us today. We're back at, at Real Estate Radio Network with Joe Scarice. Uh, and I have two great guests here, Lawrence Elliott and Judy Krieger. We're going to get more right back into inspections and understanding, evaluating properties and doing the due diligence, whether it's from a listing side and or a purchase side from the buyer side. 
And we're going to talk a little bit now about the pre-listing and inspections. I think that kind of segued from where we were talking about all the different moving parts of the, yeah. all the different inspections that need to get done before sure. even somebody buys the property or can even qualify under mortgage requirements. Because under mortgage requirements, there's now requirements of the termite inspection and all these other yeah. items. I'm very so, excited about this. Well, yep. you have to understand something. A pre-listing inspection is an amazing vehicle mm -hmm. for a listing agent. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is that is because, let's say a listing agent has a home that has a lot of problems. It brings to light what those problems are. Mm -hmm. Do I really want to list this home and have those problems? So they can make a choice. If they find a lot of problems in the house, now do we price it to sell or do we fix it? If you fix it, you're going to get more money. You have an easier sale because there's less things to negotiate later. You have no time urgency about getting things fixed because you have, in effect, done it before you got an agreement of sale on the house. Okay, So you make more money. You uh, have a cleaner sale. Uh, real estate people will love this because their E&L insurance, probably their carrier will love it because they're going to have less claims against them. Well, let's it, it, segue that. I deal with a lot of rehabbers. Yeah. Everything's being gutted down to the, the studs. Right. right. I mean, it, it almost makes sense to do a home inspection because everything's brand new anyway. Well, when, well, to let them reassure. Yeah, but think about for a pre-listing inspection. That's for listing a home we're talking about right now. So when you have rehab the house, mm -hmm. you should have something called a punch list kind of inspection mm -hmm. where somebody goes through and they say, this is wrong, that's wrong. If nothing's wrong, you have a house worth selling. That point. And that's well, that's what I mean, exciting. That it's it's the button up is, is the key. Absolutely. I, I'm I'm working on six projects myself, and yeah. it's all about a, a checklist, checklist, sure. checklist, checklist. Sure. We're just constantly doing things to make sure it's perfect. Yeah. But do you st still think there's a cost benefit on a rehab property? It's finished, yeah. and it all looks rehab. It's not like they yeah. just threw paint up. D to have an inspection and have that sitting there on the the kitchen table when potential buyers walk through. Well, think about it. Would you, again, we talked about it before. If that's your inspection, you're always going to suggest that they buy or have their own. Okay. But it, psychologically, if they read through it and they see nothing is wrong or minor things were repaired, mm -hmm. then what happens is they feel more comfortable about the house. They still should get their own inspection. Have you run into any issues well, when it comes say, to this? Not an issue, but it's a great marketing tool for agents. As a listing agent, you, you're going to market the property and say, hey, this home has a pre-inspection done on it, and it's going to be out there right on the MLS. Anybody can see that. So, so it definitely helps. A seller can see that. Right, the seller, right but the buyer sure. would see right. that right Even away. The buyer would say, wow, this is great. Look what they did. Everything they've done. Signage outside. This home was pre-inspected. Uh, uh, okay, so then what, what my next question would then lead into is um, you're saying that we're in a group of investors. What's the cost? Uh, investors are cheap, let's be honest with you. They just mm -hmm. don't want to spend money. They'd rather spend money on the lamp or the light fixture or something else. It's in, all in true. A, okay, <laughs> but the home inspection, like the whole package. In, in, in your take, what is the worst case if they have to get everything inspected? Well, or what's the best case if they don't? If it's just a standard inspection. Well, like what's the cost? So bottom line, the cost is not the problem. It's your your property that is on the market for a long period of time is the problem. So you do everything you possibly can to have the best property out there that's going to sell the fastest. So okay. so a, a typical home inspection is $400, $450. Not so, but no. what is a month's worth of money that you're leaving it out there? Because people don't see the defects or the they value. see defects. I see the value. Now that Great we're discussing value. it, yeah. I mean, sometimes you get, you know, hey, listen, not everybody it snaps right away. Right. But it'll, you only have to have a couple poor experiences mm -hmm. to say, you know what, I'm going to do this next time. I'm going to do this this way this time. Once you start you learn doing from your it, mistakes. you just keep yeah. on going. It's just a really, I mean, part of the process. Even from a termite perspective, perspective, you know, when you're renovating these old homes, more than likely, there was termites somewhere in the building, or mold, which I know you despise yeah. mold, so we're not talking Horrible. about mold. We'll keep quiet on mold. But yeah. you're telling me that a lot of these properties that have been empty for three years, two years, because they're in a state, mm -hmm. don't gather mold or gather termite issues? Well, look at, look at the roof that is now in disrepair, that water's coming in, and you have problems with the infrastructure of the building at that point. You're talking about one of my other properties, huh? No. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you know, it's funny. I bought yeah. a property, yeah. and um, we, we gutted the property out. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing all this dust of brick yeah. on the ground. You know what that means? All the moisture is in within the brick. Now you, you now you really gotta be careful what you're doing here because yeah. now you got brick falling apart yeah, sure. uh, of right. the structure of the building. Of the water building. is w- the worst enemy of the house. Yeah. I mean, let's Absolutely. be honest. Hurricane Sandy didn't do any pleasure to the the, yeah. the Jersey coast yeah. at all. It took out miles and miles of property. So, ins- and inspections are probably even more overemphasized down in South Jersey, but just because yeah. of those storms that hit down in that area, yeah. just as much up here, we had some serious hits too in certain areas of Pennsylvania. I have to let you know that there is one company out there, an inspection company, that is doing a pre-listing inspection, and you don't have to pay for it until you go to Subman, and that, that is revolutionary. Do you mind uh, enlightening us? Uh, uh, sure. Oh, are they Jersey MPA? Uh, Jersey MPA. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, that's, that's so it's a full inspection uh, in Jersey, in uh, Pennsylvania, you have um, partial inspection, which they have uh, a list of things that they'll go over, but it's not a full inspection. They, you can opt to have a full inspection. We think it's a great idea because of all the things we commented about before, but not to pay for it until you go to settlement is fabulous for the homeowner. I think it's a cost benefit relationship. It's sure. been done with home warranties. Where you pay at settlement, this is the same process, same idea. So, yeah. how, so how much? Is, okay, a home warranty. How much is really a home warranty to the seller of a property? Like, I mean, well, a if home they're paying warranty, at closing, a home warranty covers a seller while their home is on the market. So, if anything happens during that time frame, let's say a dishwasher or air conditioning, if something like that goes, they get someone who comes out and for a small like a little fee, $25, $35 approximately, they can have that item fixed. Yeah, so a it, it's a deductible. Sure. So it's covered. Yeah. It's covered for them. And then it transfers over. The seller gets that. The buyer, I'm sorry, gets the home warranty for the following year. Yeah. And then the buyer can renew if they like to, if they would like to keep that. And just a little bit of uh, information, 70% of people who have a home warranty in place after the year usually keep it after that. And for the simple reason that, look, you have um, items in the house that are getting older, so it's cost beneficial at that point. They have ease of uh, in their mind it's that things mind. are covered. Just, just peace of mind. So peace of mind, right? Well, things uh, break down and it, it's covered. Exactly, and you know, and it's funny. I just saw a property today on the market. That a realtor sent to me. It's in New Jersey, and I, I saw this property empty right. over four years ago. Hmm. Oh, it has a pool inside. Uh, well, you never know by this time. But I'm saying to myself, I saw it then. Can you imagine what it is now? I mean, what if you just laid on the ground for the last next four years? What are I you going to look like? Let a house go for three months, and you know what's wrong. With well, that's what I'm saying. That four on, so years, it's been so. empty, and it's a beautiful, majestic home. But yeah. when it comes to a beautiful, majestic home, that comes with aged material within the place, dated. I mean, yeah. the whole thing probably has to get gutted out down to the bones. A lot of TLC needed on that one. Sure. It's crazy. So um, we're going to get more into the detail of how to evaluate buying right in the next and in, in after this next break. So we're going to kind of put some questions together on that, right. and we'll we'll lead uh, lead into really helping facilitating the buyer in, in negotiation, more negotiation skills Absolutely. than anything else. So we'll be right back at Real Estate Radio Network. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Imagine the finest hand-selected USDA prime steak you'll ever have. The freshest line-caught seafood. Our Wine Spectator award-winning wine list and soul-satisfying desserts. Bring that together with the perfect date. The winning business deal. A memorable family celebration. Welcome to Rod's Steak and Seafood Grill in nearby Morristown, New Jersey. Bring your appetite and feed your passion. Your credit score is yours, and at Experian Credit Expert, we want to help you really use it. With access to helpful Experian experts over the phone and online, we can help you use it to get a better idea of what info the banks have on you. Use it to get more choice of mortgages. Use it to make your money go further. 
Take the next step to improving your financial future with your free 30-day trial at experian.co.uk. Freppy's Tex-Mex, you can definitely taste the freshness in our food. You should definitely come to Freppy's because it's a great place. You can bring your family, very kid friendly, all my servers are on. Hey, how you doing guys? We're back, Joe Scarisa, Real Estate Radio Network. I'm with Lawrence Elliott and Julie Kriegler with Philly Managed. They're based out of, uh, well, Philly Managed Town and Country Homes. There we go. Based out of Philadelphia County, which they cover the greater Philadelphia market. And we're talking just good old-fashioned educational real estate today. And we're going to dive right back into some questions because we're, we're really beating each other up on the, uh, the inspections yeah. and going right at it saying, listen, go, what do we do here, Land, how land is situated, how borders are situated, surveying, all the different types of things that could happen during the due diligence of a property. Where does this start falling into the proper negotiation skills of a buying agent, meaning somebody that's representing, somebody wants to buy that home. How does that impact negotiation as you're progressing with all these different types of inspections and as certain things come up, mm -hmm. how does that change the direction of the sale? I'm not as concerned about the mortgage perspective. I understand from the, what my responsibilities as a mortgage banker are and what my requirements, whether it's an FHA loan, conventional loan, PHFA loan, different type of programs, what the requirements are. I'm more concerned about the negotiation between realtor to realtor on behalf of one, the seller, and one on behalf of the buyer. Yeah, it's a great question. So why don't you start and then we'll get a, okay. two different so, things. So um, it depends on what hat you're wearing, first and foremost. Uh, I'll take the buyer side, you want to take the seller side? Absolutely. Okay, so as a buyer, I look to beat up the house, okay? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with the house? It's bigger than it could possibly be because I'm now negotiating as much off as possible. But I gotta be careful here not to insult the seller and they say, forget it, the deal's done. So there's a fine line that you have to ride between what's important in the inspection report to get done as well as what's fluff. You might want to put things in there just to get the important things as you're negotiating. So it becomes the inspection report is my best tool. Uh, you know, I look at it and saying, I, I can do something with this. Okay. On the selling side, I find that the cosmetics don't come to me with cosmetic issues. It's meaningless. It's things that you've seen when you walked in the door. Come to me with these structural items, things that really need to be fixed. We'll negotiate on that. We'll try to get the price down if it's something that a buyer wants to repair. That's fine. We can take care of that in other ways. The, uh, the seller can give credits towards settlement, and that's okay. But cosmetics, please. <laughs> that's a whole different story. Well, then I have to ask, have you two ever been on the opposite sides of negotiation of a property? I, I, ch I choose not to. <laughs> because she, she would well, I would say you would lose, but I'm just going to say, right. I, 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 have you ever had that situation? Have you two ever worked on the buyer and the seller side? Where you played seller or you played seller and you played buyers? Has that ever happened? Let's see. Has it ever happened? How many times? It happens. <laughs> it, does. it happens. It does. happens. Because, it we does. Have, because in, in Pennsylvania, you have a dual agency. You have transaction licensee. Yeah. And we're careful. I don't like do, doing dual agency. I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah, and for the simple reason that in a court, they could say, well, which one are you favoring? And they right. ask a question the right way, uh, an attorney, and it suddenly seems like you're favoring one person over another. And ergo, the person that you're not favoring has a lawsuit. I think it looks even more muddier if it ever gets to that point, uh, just because of the fact, I'll give you an example. I have a family member that was interested in a property. Sure. And the agent was swearing up and down that she would represent that family member equally. And I'm like, in real estate school 101, yeah. the first thing that they teach you is the selling, the listing agent represents who 100%? The seller. It's all about representation. Sure. Okay. So you're not you're not a big fan of one controlling both sides. You yeah. you rather bring somebody in just to kind of be a buffer. Is so, that what you're saying? So let me give Correct. you so let me give you some background here. This all came about because when you would walk into the office, you as a buyer, and I'm behind a desk, and you said, uh, "Hi, I'd like to see one two three Main Street." Automatically, you assumed that I was working for you because I'm taking you out, and I was a sub agent of the agent who listed the house. Mm -hmm. 
Well, lo and behold, from California came agency. <laughs> and we now have true representation for buyers, for sellers. And it works out really well. In the beginning, we had to learn how to do this. But it's, it's been in place for a while now, so we're pretty comfortable on how to make it happen. And this was the discussion I had with the agent, because I called on behalf of the family member. And yeah. I said, listen, you know, uh, the, my, my client, who is my family member, is very interested in the property, but I, she has no plans of negotiating just with you. You're going to yeah. bring somebody else in. Well, it doesn't have to be that. I said, no, then I'll just ask your broker to do it. Sure. And then the, the conversation just got a little different, and yeah. she was more than happy to start working with me and bring somebody in if, yeah. there, if, if there was a need to be. Can, can, I, I, can I make a suggestion yeah. to you? When somebody says that to me, it's all about this, and th you should run from that. Well, that's exactly. Right. And and, that, and I advised my family member just to sit on it. In yeah. the worst case, yeah. she, goes, she has nothing signed with that agent, mm -hmm. so she can go to another agent and place Absolutely. the offer. And that's right. it. And then now you have your, I hate to say it, bulldog. Right, you know, in your in your corner negotiating, and out. you should. Well, to me, based on the discussions of all the various moving parts of a property, depending on what age of the property, I've seen new construction with floods and leaks. It happens. So it happens. It happens. So you have to have somebody there yeah. to negotiate. Like when we were on a tour, they found radon in the person's house, like a little touch of radon in the house. It was out in Chester County, and it's common it's in this common. one area. Very common. And basically, no, it's common in Pennsylvania. That whole, oh, that well, this one area there, that it comes up a lot in some okay. of the houses. Sure, the, the seller was more than happy to pay for it fifteen hundred dollars and resolved it, and it's all done. Radon is not the issue it once was because there's no. remediation techniques that are cost effective uh, that and people aren't in place scared for about. So many years, yeah. but now. it wasn't it's, even a negotiation cost. piece on price. It was a matter of the seller was like, no problem, done. I'll pay it. If it's a savvy seller, they're gonna they're gonna address. A lot of certain items, depending on the circumstance of the listing. Well, it depends True. on where they have to be, when they have to be there, and their circumstances. Right. You know, I, I have a bigger family. I need to get out of this house. I want to be in a different school system. So we don't know what those circumstances are driving that decision. However, there's always circumstances that are making them say, okay, I have a buyer. I'm not going to let this fall through for $1,500. Because the first person who gives you an offer is usually the best offer. And, and again, we, we could really go round and round because I think all of us, have had multiple, oh my gosh, multiple yeah. rounds with people in negotiation. I'm sure. negotiating something right now in a pocket list. Somebody came to me with a pocket listing, yeah. and I'm going through the same thing right now. Yeah. So again, it's all a matter of uh, the art of the sale. But I, I, what I want to do is make sure we know how to get in touch with both of you. So sure. if Definitely. you don't mind, Judy, if you just you know give your information, your contact, your email, and then Lawrence, if you could follow, and then yeah, uh, sure, my email, best place to reach me, my cell phone, of course, two six seven two seven eight seven three four one. And my email address is my name, Judy Kriegler, J-U-D-I-E-K-R-I-E-G-L-E-R at Comcast.net. And you can find both of us online on our website. I'll give you my address first. It's www.soldbyjudy, S-O-L-D-B-Y-J-U-D-I-E.com. And we are online and ready to go anytime for you. Yeah, so Judy and I are a team. And it's the Elliott team, and uh, we've been doing this for many years now. Um, we've been pretty successful at it. So we'd love to have the opportunity to help you uh, in whatever your real estate needs are. You can reach me at lawrenceelliott6 at gmail.com. That's L-A-U-R-E-N-C-E-E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -L -L the number six, at gmail.com, or by phone, 215-431-4735. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, guys. And Thank I'm Joe Scarisa with Monument Bank, your host. And we'll come back to you soon with another uh, uh, interview. Hopefully, maybe I'll bring you guys back. Okay, we'd love it. At Real Estate Radio Network. You guys have a great weekend.